and, and connecting us to a lot of different areas. You can make your way there. Um, I'm going to ask for some people in the second to, if you would, to volunteer to, to read for us this evening to help us out a little bit. Um, I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have, it's a really beautiful study um, tonight. We're going to look at in this particular of the book of Amos. Um, and I can give you a topic also to sort of think about the, the, the topic is giving little and taking much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Giving little and taking much. Topic for the night. Giving little when we give little and take much. Maybe that's a better way to get it. When we give little and take much. Okay. That's going to be our topic this evening. And um, you, you will, I think you'll understand it a little bit more as we get into this particular passage. Of and again, um, it's so good to see all of you this this evening. And um, which I let everybody else in. Make sure. I think I got all the people here. You know, when more people come on, we do I admit them into the community. So um, I need some people to volunteer to, to read this particular passage of scripture. I'm going to give us some parts to read. Um, I need someone to volunteer to read verses one through three. Who, who's willing to read verses one through their sister? And thank you, thank you. Um, verses one through three of Amos chapter eight. Who's willing to read verses four through six? I will. Okay, sister, sister Deacon Roz is going to read verses four through six. Who's really willing to read verses um, seven through eight? I will. Okay, sister Honeycutt, who's willing to read verses nine through ten? Mm -hmm. Okay, mom, All right. This is going to be fun tonight. Who's going to read verses 11 through 12? All right. Okay, so 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 Reverend Nikki going to read verse 11 through 12? And who's going to read verses 13? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, y'all not going to have to. Y'all will not have to get from the pastor for not getting it right, Deacon Ross. I got it. I got it. Okay. And, 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 who's, and who's willing to read verses 13 through 14? All right, I'll hook you up. So, 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 so I'll read verses 13 through 14. Okay? So so let's pray. I'm going to open, open us up in prayer. Lord God, we thank you once again for um, this day because it is the day you made, Lord God. So it's my prayer that we've been able to rejoice and be glad of the miracle, the mercy that we've received today, just being alive, Lord God. We thank you for our measure, of our portion of our health, our strength. Lord, we, we, we thank you for, for the hope that we have, the living hope that we have in you. Lord God, we thank you for your word, because your word is indeed a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. And now, Lord, as we prepare to study your word, we ask you to open up our hearts, our mind, help us to focus, Lord God, reveal yourself to us through your holy word, Lord God. Please bless our time together and help us not, Lord God, just to get knowledge, but to be to receive transformation, to to be, be better, to live better, to, to, to be holy, to be more holy, Lord God, um, as, we, as we learn, as we study this scripture tonight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 All right, amen. I, I, I wanted to open us up a little bit tonight with a question for you to think about. Um, when, when you think about ministry or service, to the Lord, what does that mean to you when you just think ministry and service? What does that mean to you? What did he say? I said, when you think about ministry or service to the Lord, what does that mean to you? Is that okay. Go ahead. Sure. Sure. This is Go. That we can. Go ahead, we can do, oh, okay. 
um, that we can do as much as we can with the strength that God gives us mm -hmm. to help the, out the body. Mr. Bates. You, you, you asked a question about um, ministry of, of the Lord. Is that what you asked? Yeah, like what does that mean to you? When you think of ministry and service to the yeah. Lord, what does that mean to you? It means that you 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 helping others besides yourself. Huh. You it's, it has a lot to do with testimony, reading, uh, calling up calling up uh, person persons, okay. uh, helping someone along the way that's having a hard time. Sometimes your testimony can help someone else uh, out of a hard situation. Continue okay. to let them know that that you are there, although you're not there physically, but you can be there by mm -hmm. phone call texts or whatever you can do but it's all about showing what God has done for you and you and you let people know what God is and who Jesus Amen. is to you, through you through all your trials and tribulations how you've gotten over by believing and, and relying on God and his son Jesus we are testimonies our bodies are a testimony to the Lord Amen Amen, Amen. We are a testimony Amen. Yeah. So, no, Oh, what Sister Bay said, helping others, and and and, uh, and our ministry of the first Lord being a testimony. It's a testimony of our love, to God. So, 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 who are, so who gets to do ministry and service to the Lord? Who who are the ministers in the service of the Lord in the church? We all are. Yeah. Uh, look at y'all. Well, I came. In I came and trick y'all tonight. Good. Good. I, <laughs> good. We all are, as it says in the book of First Peter, we with a priesthood of believers. Okay, we all have a ministry. We all have service to the Lord. In fact, it says in um in the book of First Corinthians, um, around I think chapter twelve, that God has given 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 through the Holy Spirit a gift, a spiritual gift to everyone in the church. Everybody has something that they, God has given them to be able to use to serve the body of Christ. Okay, so Amen. so it so it makes sense that when we read in um, Acts chapter twenty and verse thirty five, when it quotes that Jesus said it was more blessed to what? Yes, to give. Yes. Then to what? Receive. So 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 so, so, so I, so I want to challenge us tonight. Do do we believe that we really believe it's more blessed to give than receive? It's better to give. It's more. It's better. You're more blessed to serve than it is to receive yeah. that means actually to be served okay so so i see sister Kristen, um not renata here saying yep yep i agree amen so, so, so Kristen, is, t t t tell me tell me how it is in in your view is more blessed to, to give than receive how is it more blessed to give receive because that seems to go counter to our culture to to everything we see in society society is about getting 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 all the stuff that you're supposed to have and, and acquiring things and very seldom do we talk about giving you know just even the very notion of when we use the word even conservative conserve is like to keep versus to um to give right to save and and, and so how is it more blessed than to give than receive that seems counterintuitive to 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 us uh, many people in the world in which we live so I think of it as to be more Christ-like, you want to give than receive. Because Jesus gave his all. We should give our all and not expect anything in return. Okay. Amen. Now, 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 now Deacon Roz, like a faithful deacon, she said, yep, amen. Now, uh -huh. now I want us to be honest tonight. How I many of us give and don't expect to get anything in return? Now, be honest. Be honest. No. I don't. Okay. I used to. Yeah, I used to, but I don't now. I don't. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. But I used to. Because I'm gonna show you a good example. You go. You have children, or you got some family members. You provide for them. You help them out. You give them something. In many cases, you got an expectation. Of, of how they should um, act or behave towards you, right? 
there's a reciprocation <laughs> that you expect, right? I mean, if you're in a relationship, dating or married to somebody, do you operate from a standpoint, you know what? I don't expect nothing in return. I'm just gonna give, I'm gonna love, I'm gonna do it unconditionally, and I don't respect, expect anything in return. <laughs> Well, well, I think you. That's different. That's different. Yeah, that's different. If you're giving, <laughs> if it's a material thing, I, I'm not looking for any material things in return. Exactly. But if you're giving your time and your love and your patience, that's it's, to me a little different because yeah, you're putting your your heart and and you want you want to know that you know if you fall, you know, or if you're hurt or whatever the case is, you have a support system, you have that there. But, you know, many times, unfortunately, that doesn't come through. So you have to be ready to and, and prepared to, to deal with that as well. But I guess, yeah, when you do put in your love and your, your time, you kind of, you probably do look forward to something in return. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something. <Yeah. laughs> It, it, one, one, one of the areas when I'm doing like premarital counseling that we I, always I do is we study in the book of Ephesians in chapter five and, and we spend uh -huh. a lot of time focusing on this service aspect in the relationship, especially I do with the men and, and being able to serve in their life just as Christ did for the church and serving their wife, you know, serving their family. And, and it's a very, it's very focused on not so much what you're going to get out of it, but what you're mm. going to give to it. Mm. Okay. Mm. It, 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 and, 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 and many times we look at some of the issues and challenges we have in um, relationships in general, especially we can see in marriages, is many times it's the, the unmet expectations or one person is giving or doing more than the other um, mm. as it regards mm. the relationship, putting more in it than the other. Okay. But, you know, basically, they, they're giving little and taking much. You know, you know it's none, you know, none worse, right? If you was a mother, you at home, if you was a housewife and you working and keep keep washing clothes and doing all this stuff, taking care of the kids and and, air, and all everybody else do is just keep dirtying up the dishes, dirty them up, don't wash no dishes, don't wash any clothes. You know, <laughs> you giving, 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 and they just taking, 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 right? It don't feel good, right? And it doesn't feel that way. Right, and that's material too. So yeah, that's material. It's something, something mm. in the relationship when when one person is given a lot and the other is taking a lot, you know, and not given a lot. Right, it's not balanced. Right. Well, guess what? T -t Tonight, as we look in the book of Amos, we're going to start to see an area we don't pay a lot of attention to, and and how much um, God gives versus what we take, or even sometimes. Um, what we're going to focus tonight, how much we may take when it comes to the things of God versus what we give. Mm -hmm. okay? and, and that's mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to start to see how the people of God got some things confused when it came to the service to God. Okay, we're going to work through a particular illustration that really arrested me this week that I couldn't let go in this particular passage that, that we're going to, going to study tonight that I hope will be a blessing for us that, that, that we don't give a little and take much from the church. We don't come to the church with expectation. I want y'all to serve versus I serve. Like Jesus said, if you want to come first, you must come last. The son of man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom. And if God, the King, Jesus Christ, the son of God comes and serves, then wow, then, then who are we to take an approach mm. or perspective that we supposed to be served all the time? Right. No, if you've been in the church for a while, you know, you know, you, you know, sometimes we get kind of funny if, if people don't recognize, yeah. you don't do certain stuff in a way that we not serve. You know, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. You, you, you come to the fellowship hall and we got food and, you, and we end up in the back of the line. You know, sometimes yeah. people get so funny when it's taking, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They're like, why? Why they got up there at the front? Why why that mother with kids is able to jump to the front of the line? She jumping to the front so them kids don't run around and start knocking over stuff. Gotta get them sent down and get some food, right? But but mm -hmm. we thinking about us, you know, in the, in the worship service. Why they let them kids all loud and stuff, right? We're thinking about us in the worship service. I want to focus, I want to hear, I want to hear the word, I want to sing the song. But how often are we figuring out a way that we can serve 
and even help those families, help the people in our midst, that we can be a blessing to them. As he said, it's more blessed to give than receive. So, so tonight we're gonna look at the people of God mm -hmm. at the time of Amos in an issue that happened where they were taking a whole lot more than they were giving. Okay, and I think mm -hmm. it's challenge us tonight and, and mm -hmm. our theology and some of our worship of God, especially the way we, we thought or we think God views our worship. All right, so, so, so let's go on and get in and read this. Today. Let's see what God has to say to us. This, we're in Amos chapter eight. We're going to be reading it in, in its entirety, starting at verse one. This is. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go, 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 Sister okay. Chris, as you pose to read first. Okay, um, I'm doing the. I'm reading from the N NIV. This is what the Sovereign Lord showed me: a basket of ripe fruit. What do you see, Amos? He asked. A basket of ripe, ripe fruit, I answered. Then the Lord said to me, the time is right for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, the songs in the temple will turn to wailing. Many, many bodies flung everywhere. Silence. Hear this. You who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over that we may sell grain and the Sabbath be ended, that we may mock it wheat, skimping on the measure, boosting the price and cheating with dishonest scales, buying the poor with silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, selling even the sweeping with the wheat. That was four to six. I mean, yeah. Yep. Four to six. Who's reading seven and eight? <clears throat> mm -mm. Seven I'll read eight. You're at seven? Yeah, we're at seven. Okay. Um, I'm reading from the uh, prayer Bible. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord has, has sworn this oath by his own name, the pride of Israel. I will never forget the wicked things you have done. The earth will tremble for your deeds, and everyone will mourn. The land will rise up like the Nile River of flood time. Toss about and sink again. Okay, and I'll be reading from the uh, e English Standard Version ESV. And on that day, declares the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. New International Reader Version. The Lord and King announces the days are coming when I will send hunger through the land, but people will not be hungry for food. They will not be thirsty for water. Instead, they will be hungry to hear a message from me. People will wander from the desert to the Mediterranean. They will travel from north to the east. They will look for a message from me, but they will not find it. Beautiful girls and strong young men will grow faint in that day, thirsting for the Lord's word. And those who swear by the shameful idols of Samaria, who take oaths in the name of the God of Dan and make vows in the name of the God of Beersheba, they will all fall down never to rise again. Ooh. Ooh, so, 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 so I guess as we approach this text, the first thing we want to ask ourselves, it, it seems like God is upset about something. Would, would, wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah. Right. So God, and, and God is really upset, right? And when you just look uh -huh. at, yeah. you know, he's like, he's talking about bringing judgment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and it gets to a point where he says, he's going to bring a famine and the famine is going to be the word of God. Right, as, as it's going to be a hunger and a thirst for God's word 
and they're not going to be able to get it. Now, now, now think about that. Now you hunger and you have a thirst for God's word and you're not able to get <clears throat> feed you because God's word is like food, it's spiritual food. Mm. And can you mm. imagine what that will be like? Mm. Mm. I mean, many times if we're honest with ourselves, we're not hungry enough or thirsty enough for God's word. But now mm -hmm. if it got things got so bad that when you want to get a word from the Lord, you mm -hmm. can't get a word from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? Because most of the time we take for granted, you know what? You know, if I if some go wrong or some fall short, some don't work out right, even if I haven't been praying right or praying regularly or even going to church regularly or reading God's word, I know, you know what? I'm going to get right with the Lord. God is a merciful God. God is a graceful God. God is compassionate. And God going to work this thing out. Right? All right. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm growing up in the church. And I've seen, you know, times when, I'm going to tell you, people get strong in faith when they got some storms and trials coming. And they, you know, mm -hmm. prayer warriors, they at church, they on their knees, they crying out, they mm -hmm. shouting. You know, because they got a problem. They they need they need to God to work it out. They come mm. and they're praising the Lord with the songs and and the word. The word is just good. The word is just on time because they have access to it. But imagine if you didn't have access to that. Oh, what it would be like? You can't get a word from the Lord to help you through your situation or your crisis. Oh. He says, "I'm gonna give you a hunger for God's word." And like I said. The big challenge sometimes, many times in the church, we don't have a, enough hunger and thirst for God's word. Yeah. Right. right. They say that the church in many cases is the most, the people in the church are more biblically literate than people in the university who don't even right. believe God's word. They know more about God's word than the people in the church. You know, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. but, but he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not give you a word and you're going to be hungry and thirsting for it. So we got to understand tonight what happened that God would do such a thing. Why would God not give us a word? Like, what can we do where God doesn't provide a word, whether it's a famine? You know, it ain't no, it's no more preaching. There's no preaching. Imagine that. There's no preaching going on. He said, you'll be hungry for preaching. It's mm -hmm. not going to, you know, that's what he's saying. That's the imagery that's there. Because the prophet would say what thus saith the Lord. He would proclaim God's word. And he says, ain't no prophets going to be saying nothing. Mm. It's going to be bad. It's going to be this is going to be the time when you want to hear a word from the Lord and there will be no word from the Lord. And God, we have to ask, well, why would, what could the people do? Or what's, what could we do that such a thing could happen? Why could, how could God get so mad and not give us a word? Mm -hmm. Does anybody got any mm -hmm. ideas or suggestions based on what we read tonight? <laughs> disobedience. Okay, we got some disobedience going on. What is going on? They're walking all over the needy people. Ooh. Crush those who are poor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you heard that? Mm -hmm. No. What happened? What? It was around oh, verse said, six. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that was verse four. I was yeah. saying they walked all over the needy people and crushed those who are poor in the land. Mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. now, look at this. Listen to mm -hmm. you, uh, verse four who robbed the poor and trampled down the needy. Mm -hmm. The poor. Now, think about it. the poor don't have hardly nothing. Mm -hmm. So how in the world are you going to be robbing mm -hmm. the poor, taking advantage of the poor? Mm -hmm. Right? They're cheating others by using dishonest scales. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cheating people with dishonest scales. We're going to get into that. What, what scales do you think they're talking about? What kind of dishonest scales? Because God says he loves a person who use, uses uneven scales. So what mm -hmm. are the scales that he's talking about? <clears throat> Does anybody know? He talking about like an offering? Oh, there, there you go. So, Sister Kristen, look at you. You must have been preparing for study tonight. So, so there's a scale for the offering. Now, now mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you how it worked in biblical times. People were supposed to give a certain amount of offering, as was their ability. Okay, you follow me so far? Okay, mm -hmm. an offering based on their ability. But see, 
unlike the way we do, each person gives, you know, out of their heart where they would like to give. And, and really nobody know what you're giving besides the treasurer and probably the financial secretary. Okay, nobody else knows, okay? Now, the way it was in these times, you showed up and they said, if you had an offer, it was a certain amount you was gonna give. Now, <laughs> they knew how people were. So guess what, when you got ready to give, they knew what you were supposed to be to give. You brought some and you put it on the scale. <laughs> and if it wasn't right, mm. it was safe. <laughs> Uh, you need to put some more on. <laughs> now, uh, imagine this. You see our sister Donna looking. She's like, oh, Lord. You know, imagine imagine that we did something every Sunday. You should bring your offer. We put it on the scale. And the scale is, nope, that's not enough. The scale knows. You see, you see that's what they said. So, so what you had was the priest. And what was going on is one understanding of this passage, they would take advantage of the poor with their offerings. Now, Jesus also talked about this when we get to John 2. Remember, you know, we always like to say Jesus is meek and Jesus is kind and he's just so merciful, right? We don't never think of Jesus as whooping folks, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks Jesus is whooping nobody, mm -hmm. right? Y'all do know what whooping means, right? I don't yeah. Sure. Lord is. Nobody think of Jesus. Well, you read John chapter <laughs> translation in John 2 when Jesus showed up at the temple and people mm. taking advantage of the poor. Mm. It says that he pulled out a whip yeah. and started whooping the money changers. <laughs> he, he, was, he flipped over the tables mm. and started whooping folks. That's <laughs> Jesus. Okay? Uh. Jesus don't play. You know, you want to you wanna tick God off? Take advantage of the poor. Mm. Take advantage of people on the margins of society. Mm. And, but you want to, I, I believe, you want to see the wrath of God, <laughs> take advantage of people who, mm. who are defenseless, mm. um, widows, orphans, the poor. God, time and time again in the Bible, chastised his people for disregarding the poor. Okay? Mm. Now that, that's one aspect, but there was another aspect. Also for the poor, you mentioned verse six, which is also the, the, you buy poor people to make slaves out of them. You buy those who are in need for a mere pair of sandals. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. now, now, now look, now look what he's he's saying now. He's saying that look look what you will do. You will sit there and enslave poor people for a piece of silver. You you take advantage of them. Okay, for some money. Mm. Right, that, that that's part of what we see going on in our land today. This whole issue of um, when, no matter you know when we talk about um, minimum wage, right? That's the big thing we're talking about right now. Minimum wage today in the um, news, it was the um, the they 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 did the the um, when people was behind on on, on their rent, yeah, um, right, and, and people being eviction evicted, the moratorium ended. On July 31st. Ooh. Now, now I'm gonna tell you something. This is what this is what God is getting at with stuff. Now, the people, if you've been following the news, they actually said they was gonna let the moratorium lapse back before Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. They did this a long time ago. They said we're not gonna renew it. Everybody, this is Democrat, Republican, President, everybody agreed. But but look what they did. They 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 sat there. Let the moratorium kick in. It was supposed to expire on July 31st. Now, does anybody know anything about the civics about July 31st versus August 1st? The month of August? Your Congress oh. go on recess for the month of August. Mm -hmm. They go on vacation for the month of August. So let's let it lapse. And then we're going to go on vacation. And because we're on vacation, there's nothing we can do about that. Mm -hmm. And this is the one issue where mm. Democrat, Republican, everybody was quiet. Came Monday, okay? They were quiet. All of, we can't do. No, no, we on recess. No, it's nothing we can do. Point the fingers. When in reality, they had a long. They knew. They agreed to let it lapse. Mm -hmm. Oh, they had about two, three months to fix it. But what the issue is? Guess what? Don't care about the poor. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not gonna have to worry about mm -hmm. being. So they don't have no concern for them. You, you see, um, I, I'm getting my money trampling over the poor. We get into issues of wages. Yep, 
that's an issue because you, when, when you sit there and don't pay people a, de de a decent wage, they stay poor. This, this is real. And, but now we expect that in the world, right? We, we, you would expect that not saved. That don't surprise you. But guess what? Tonight, he talking about the people of God doing stuff like that. Mm. Selling the poor to slavery. Basically, for you to make a little money, this is what's deep. Your brother and sister need money. So what you would do is you would let them sell themselves into slavery to you to help you prosper. Wow. To work your crops so you can make money. That's mm. the cut. But here's the problem that if you know God's word and law, he said you are not to allow your brother and sister to be enslaved. They are not supposed to be a servant to you. Mm -hmm. Hear that? Mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. You're not to take advantage of your mm -hmm. brother and sister. He says, look, you don't enslave an Israelite. That's what he's trying to get. Now, why would God say you should never enslave an Israelite? Why would God say something like that to his people? Because aren't they the chosen ones? Hmm? Aren't they chosen? They the chosen ones. But guess what? It's even easier than that. It's more than that. It's even easier than that. We go oh. back to the book of... Yes? Who, who else? Oh, no. I was just going to say the only master that was supposed to serve is God. But mm -hmm. that may be off. <laughs> no, we're only supposed to serve God. Yeah. I'm going to even take you back and make it even easier than that. He said, you shouldn't say nobody because you ought to remember when you was enslaved and what it was like. Oh, oh yeah. Somebody, yeah. Um, in a way that you did not want to be treated. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. The golden rule, right? Yeah. Said, Look, I brought you out of slavery. Yeah. About that and them being in the wilderness mm -hmm. and them platform in the book of Amos. He said, look, how can you enslave your brother and sister when you look at all the stories you've been told time and time again, our people were in slavery in Egypt and God brought them out. God loved them. And he yeah. gave, when he gave the law, the commandments, he said, you will not enslave your brother and sister. Yeah. Okay. So you don't take advantage of your brother and sister in Christ, but, but let's go deeper. They did some even worse than that. They would sit there and when the pain <laughs> for them to bring their wheat to exchange it for money, they would devalue what the wheat was worth. So mm. they give the poor less money for what they had worked and harvested. Mm. See, that takes us back to when African mm. came out of slavery in this nation, right? If y'all remember, we had a system called sharecropping. <laughs> the word sounds good, share cropping. We're supposed to be right. sharing the cropping but that's not really how it worked the way it worked was because the people didn't know how to count they didn't know how to do the math and stuff what would happen they didn't see the mass the, the the owner's ledgers but what happened is they would say well you need some tools to till the ground you're gonna need some food to till the ground you're gonna need a place to stay for the season and by the time they finished the season added up the numbers well guess what you got a balance you owe for eating and sleeping and having clothes oh you owe money so now you work the next season to pay off what you owe from the previous season. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to tell you I got a different book for what the crop, the cotton is worth for you versus what it's worth for other folks. So I'm devaluing, giving you less money for your work. And then on top of that, cheating you, giving you stuff that I'm overpricing. Uh, and since yeah. the people of God um, was getting the people who had had wealth and then were prospering, were actually taking advantage of their own brothers and sisters um, in the nation of Israel, the poor people, by basically giving them less for what they earned and then making more money themselves by doing it. It was almost like, it, it, it's called double dipping. Yeah, they were double dipping. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you less for it and I'm gonna make more money. So, so, so that's why mm -hmm. when you see, mm -hmm. as, as Men's Nikki said, when we see in verse five, it said that the verse 5b, you measure, I'm reading the New Living Translation, you measure out grain with dishonest measures and you cheat the buyer with dishonest scales. That's what I just, that's what we just said. You, you, you got the scales and mm -hmm. it's kind of down a little bit to the scale to make it not, not go down as much. You know, you put a little weight on it, pull it down a little bit or something so that when you put the stuff on, it takes more to bring it down. Okay. But there's something else that was really bad going on. It was not only just that they were cheating the poor, the people were helpless, they were taking 
advantage of them. But guess what? It also said that, you know what? You were looking forward to the new moon festival and the Sabbath to be over for you to do what? To market weed. Market weed again. Sell green. To do what? Mm -hmm. Don't sell the weed in To go sell. sell make money. Sell the weed. Go sell the weed. You know what that reminds me of? Um, like you know how Sundays you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to shop, like everything was closed. I don't know for the different regions in in the US, but for us out here, Sundays were like shut down. Everything Amen. was closed. <laughs> and then now, like as I grew, like everything's open. The Christmas, like nothing is closed ever. That's right. Yeah. It's gotten to now. There's like no downtime, no time to reflect. Or we need to go back. Uh, yeah. You ready for this? I'm gonna go deep on y'all. I'm, I'm I'm not trying to hate on them, but I was recently riding down on. It's called Providence Highway Route One. Route One. It goes all the way down through Massachusetts and the Rhode Island. McDonald's had a sign because their biggest. Who's McDonald's biggest competitor, right? And their biggest threat. Does anybody know who their big biggest threat is? Burger King. Burger King. Bur Burger King on their way out. Chick-fil-A. Oh, right. And oh. they're closed on Sundays. Yeah. They are yeah. it. Well, watch this. Yeah. Because Chick Chick-fil-A is a Christian-owned company. They headquartered yeah. in Atlanta by the Kathy family. But here's what's deep. McDonald's just put up a sign that says, um, we sell chicken on Sunday. We sell chicken on Sunday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's, they, that, that's, no their they plan. that's their plan to survive yeah. Chick-fil-A. We sell chicken <laughs> on Sunday. But you see what it's saying? Those yeah. people that I think you used to call them blue laws up in Massachusetts, right? Nobody yeah. Yeah. Call blue laws. Yeah. Remember, everything was shut down. Now everything is open. It used to be you couldn't get no look on Sunday. Guess what? Right. The mm -hmm. open on Sunday. Now, yeah. right? So, 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 but, but, so you see what, what he was saying with the people of God, they were sitting up there showing up on the Sabbath. They were mad on the Sabbath because they couldn't mm -hmm. worship. Anyone. <laughs> but yeah. worse than that, they're going to work <clears throat> their brothers and sisters of Israel in the ground because they're trying to make money. So they were sitting there literally like, man, I can't wait to this Sabbath to be over. Now, now, before we get too hard on them, you know, sometimes we, we may have been like that. You know, we're trying to honor the Sabbath and some something we want to do or some show. Ooh, I can't wait to the Sabbath. Is I can't wait to Sunday over. So I can do or or we used to, or when you do the sun sun up, sundown stuff with fasting, man, I can't oh man, this I can't wait for this fast to be over. Man, I hope the pastor does not do a fast for Lent this year. Oh, in that 40 days. Come on, Pastor. That's a long time to be. I can't wait. For, I can't wait to this fast to be over. They couldn't wait to Sunday to be over the Sabbath or yeah. Sabbath them so that they could get back to work. They had the new moon feast where they were celebrating having harvest. They were like, Man, I can't wait to this new moon festival to be over. I can't mm -hmm. wait to get over so I can go back to making money mm -hmm. and cheating people. And cheating people. Because because they was like, well, on Sunday, hmm. watch this, on the Sabbath, I got to be holy. Ooh, now, see, see that, that, that on Sunday, I got to act right. Okay, now, now well, I'm going to act right on Sunday, right? So I'm not going to cuss nobody out on Sunday because it's Sunday, right? I'm yeah. not going to treat you bad up in church because what? I'm in church. Okay, so I'm not going to curse because I'm in church. I'm, or you better, okay, I'm not going to do that in the sanctuary. You know, you, you ever heard how some churches will say, <laughs> you don't want to have no church means where? In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Look at Sister Donna, you know what I'm talking about? No, let's have the church means in the fellowship hall. Because in the fellowship <laughs> hall, I can say what I want to say and act however I want to act. But in the sanctuary, I can't, I can't act that way. All right? Or if we're in the fellowship hall. Pastor, don't say the Holy Spirit led you to do that. No, don't say that. <laughs> from telling what I want to say in a piece of my mind, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, the people was like, I'm going to celebrate the Sabbath, but can't this Sabbath get over sooner, this new moon festival, so that I can get back to doing what I was doing? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. I, now, I had a question. Uh... What's your question? 
Brother Tommy, it, it, what is your question, brother? If these people are cheating on on their own brothers and sisters, and, and technically, they, it, in in their heart, if they're cheating on them, they're technically they technically have no drift for they have no love for God or anything, and don't like and they uh, drift away and stuff. It, it, the question is, why uh, why does God still accept them even though they they still they still uh <coughs> away from God like that. Great they, they... Okay, that's a great question. Let's answer that thing. This is how I like to answer questions. My wife and I, when we talk sometimes, I guess because I'm a preacher, I like to answer the question with an illustration that can crystallize it in your mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. Many of you either have some children you have or some nieces and some nephews or something like that. If anybody has some children, some grandchildren or some nieces or nephews, raise your hand. All right? Amen. Now, when your nieces or nephews or your grandchildren or your children do not treat you right or get loud on you or do something crazy that, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that you know, get on your last nerve, or they forget to say thank you for something that you've done for them. It could have been you done slaved all day cooking dinner and they're not appreciative for it. Or you done wash clothes, you don't wash the clothes, folding them up, and they just throw them all back on the ground. You done got them a hamper. They're not appreciative. Do you stop loving them? Uh-uh. No. Mm -hmm. You're not my children no more. You're not my niece and nephew no more. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had experience? You get them a gift on Christmas. They you done thought this is mm -hmm. the if you could get them, they open the crisp, the gift up, and then look at it and say, "Is this it?" <laughs> I mean, isn't there still that point where at, at the, it gets too overbearing, where you have to let it go? I mean, well, no. What I'm saying, brother Thomas, is that the reason why God does that is because God loves us, and God yeah. forgives yeah. them time and time again when they repent. And God shows mercy and compassion because God is love. Yeah, this mm -hmm. this passage, shows, but it's, but, but, mm -hmm. this passage, but I mean, isn't there like a certain extent though to it? Oh, yeah, you know? there's a consequence. There's consequences, and in this passage, what we're dealing with, basically, what God is doing is judging the people. He's judging their behavior. He's judging their behavior based on what they're doing as the people of God who ought to be acting and behaving like what? God. They said in Leviticus mm -hmm. chapter 18, he said mm -hmm. it a few times Leviticus, be holy as I'm holy. So all he's saying is you need to act the way I would act when you deal with people. Now, would anybody imagine God trying to, to cheat you out of something? When we, we think mm -hmm. of something like that, it only makes sense, does it? God was trying to cheat you, uh, trying to try. No, that's ludicrous. Well, guess what? It ought to be ludicrous for the people of God. That should be unimaginable. Mm -hmm. People of God, mm -hmm. people, and guess what it says in Galatians? Well, guess what? You need to do what? Good, but do especially good to the household of faith, the household of God. Mm -hmm. It ought to at least be the household of God you treat everybody right. And he's saying, look, my issue with y'all, y'all don't even treat the people in the family right. Right? Mm -hmm. We know what it's like, right? Some right. of the parents in the house, right? You know when you got one of the kids, not the kids not treating one another, <clears throat> not loving one another right. You know what? Mm -hmm. Time to give them discipline, <laughs> correct them in love, just because they're not loving one another. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I, well, I'm going to test mm -hmm. this sometimes where I've gotten in trouble for not showing love to my sister. Now, I'm not talking about getting in trouble, getting a lecture. But when I grew up, you didn't get lectures for getting in trouble. We didn't nope. talk about um, a long time what you was doing wrong. It was some other methods that were used that helped you get the- Amen. Uh, <laughs> it was much more effective if you learned about loving, loving one another. Okay. Well, well, guess what? That's the best way to say this. And that did not mean that my mother or uh, whoever, well, my mother, my uncle, my grandmother, whoever, my teacher did not love me any less. It actually meant they loved me enough 
to discipline mm -hmm. their love. Well, guess what tonight? Mm -hmm. What God is doing is disciplining his people because they've not been faithful because God don't sit there and turn his head when his children are not doing right. No, God mm -hmm. is with it. Wow. Yeah, verse two. <laughs> in, uh, in IRB version. Amen. That's right. For and and uh, 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 in, in just a comment to the question of why God keeps accepting them for the same reason we keep accepting our children. We don't just mm -hmm. tell them, you know, you go, you out, you, yeah. you erase. You know, we love them and we forgive them. You forgive them. Mm -hmm. and then and you heard that? And I'm going to show you how, how, this is why you know God is real. Because you're in the book of Exodus, and God is sitting up there so mad. <laughs> He's like, Moses, you know what? I'm about to strike them down, and I'm going to build myself a better nation. Uh, 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 God, God, you, Moses, God, if you do that, the people are not going to think you could bring them out. You know, oh, oh, okay, I'm going to relent. Then God shows mercy. And, and sometimes God is like, I'm going to strike them down. And God, you know what? God sits there and God relents, so to speak. God shows mercy because God loves, you know, it, uh -huh. God, we ought to in some ways relate a whole lot to God with some of the issues we deal with in dealing with people who we love. Yes. Right. And, and God don't cast us out. Now he may deal with us and correct us, but he don't stop loving us. And right. Loves us. And we still right. his children. We still his children. And, 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 and now I'm let minister, I mean, Reverend Nikki talk. And uh, 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 Pastor Nikki talked uh, as she was about to lift up that verse too about that that fruit that he said the summer fruit that was right. I think she was about to say. Uh, um. Yeah. Well, that verse it said um, at the end of that verse, the time is right for my people Israel. I will no longer spare them. But then, if you go to the next chapter, <laughs> he talks about. Um, Let's see. Um, in chapter nine. Yeah, in chapter nine. Um, he says some hard stuff, you know, so he's dealing with the people. God is dealing with them because they've done so much evil. They've uh, really treated the poor badly within, within and probably without too. Of, of the Israelites and um, he says, I am the Lord and King. My eyes are watching the sinful kingdom of Israel. I will wipe it off the face of the earth, but I will not totally destroy the people of Jacob. Announced mm -hmm. the Lord. So he's, he, one of the things that God does is he keeps a remnant. There are some people who mm -hmm. are faithful to God. There's some people who don't, um, <laughs> just totally go against all of what God has taught them and um, and choose to disobey and serve other idols and all that. Um, and so some of them are continuing to stay faithful to God. So he keeps a remnant and allows them to be able to receive the blessings. But yes, there is a time where God says enough is enough, but he does a lot of patience. He waited a long, 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 long time before giving um, mm -hmm. the consequence of people going, for example, to exile. The question is, if, if, he, if they get to that certain extent, will he, does he ever state that he, he would end up casting them off of, off of the gates of heaven and down into the depths of hell for that? Well, actually, God will actually say, he said, he says, and he says it time again in some of the major prophets, I will cast you off to the uttermost parts of the world. And, and, and he actually says, there's a, he actually makes very clear there's a judgment that comes when we do not put our faith in God, but we will not be with God. Now, we don't want to talk about it a lot of times, but no, it's Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. You only get to God through Jesus Christ. Yes. And there is a judgment that comes where mm -hmm. God is going to judge those who did not put their faith in God. And here's what's beautiful. Mm -hmm. if you have faith, your trust, your, you believe and you follow Jesus Christ. And guess what? You don't even have judgment. Because guess what? 
it's no need for you to talk about judgment. You already know what you did was guilty. No, God going to acquit you. That's you already know you was guilty. You're a sinner. You, it's nothing. It don't need. It, it don't need you trying to do like most people do. I, or how do you plead not guilty? No, yeah, I'm guilty. And then you got to God acquit you, right? People be like not guilty, and they know good and well they're guilty. No, he says we don't even enter into judgment. But those who have not put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they have judgment. So, so, so Thomas, yes, if you don't put your trust in the Lord, and here's the deal: God knows your heart. I don't know. I don't. Nikki and I, none of us know nobody else's heart. We can think we know somebody's heart. Right. Jesus, guess what? The, the 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 goats could be surprised getting in heaven in the sheep. Some of the ones who looking like sheep might be surprised because they ain't in heaven. Ooh. They like, what do we do? How how do we um feed you and visit you as in prison when you did it to the least of these? You did it for me. Because looks can be deceiving. Mm. Mm -hmm. but God knows the heart. That's why he won. Mm -hmm. he said, I'm looking for a man or a woman. Uh, when he talked about David in particular, after my own heart. So this, what's the kind of heart that God has? A compassionate heart, a heart of love, a heart of justice, a heart of mercy, a heart of steadfastness, commitment to his people. All right. Now, I want to give you some practical applications from something I looked up this week and was studying that helps to bring into view this whole notion of what I said, you know what, giving a little and taking much of what, what would be the, the application that we could take from this text. Because in the time we're talking about people giving wheat, the wheat being devalued versus the people getting a lot of, it says silver and gold and making a lot out of stuff, okay? And, and the word it used in, in verses four through five is this notion of making the ephah small and the shekel large. The ephah is the unit of measure they would use for wheat, just so you know, okay? So it would have been how much wheat you would have given. You measured by ephah. But watch this, that's how much you give. But the shekel would have been how much you get back, how much money, how much gold and silver. So it said there, if you was paying attention, verse four through five, you make the ephah small and the shekel large. Because here's a little application of some pieces I want to give to us that we can, can think about and consider tonight is that we make the ephah small when it concerns the spiritual aspects of our life. You make ephah small when, you're, when you make prayer and fasting and reading of God's word something that you don't think is a lot of you need to do. You don't see a lot of value. That means you make it small. That, But at the same time, you enlarge the shekel of blessings, uh, of the shekel of gifts and grants we expect from the Holy Spirit. Watch this now. <laughs> little to prayer, fasting, and reading God's word, but I expect for God to work in me through the Holy Spirit to do something supernatural. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that's where you made... The ephah small, the shekel big, because the shekel is money. We, we love the Holy Spirit, but are we giving what we need to be giving so that God can work in a supernatural with the Holy Spirit? Watch this. We make it small, the ephah, concerning our offerings to God. Watch this. In money, effort, in time. You hear that? We make that small. We don't want to spend a lot of, we don't want to give what we're able to give back to the Lord, just tithing, or we don't want to put some some effort into our holiness that we know some things we need to change in our life or we don't want to put time in serving the lord but watch this but we want to enlarge the shekel of the blessings and generosity we expect from the lord we want god to bless us we want god to work our stuff out for us but we don't even want to give the little bit that god calls us calls us to give and we even devalue that wow Ask for 10%, that's like ephah. But we don't even want to give 10%, but we want God to give us the gold of blessings. We want mm -hmm. the generosity from God. We want God to be generous to us, but we don't want to be generous to God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Watch, I'm giving you a practical application. We make the ephah mm -hmm. fall. Whoa, it's about to get heavy here. When we, when we value God's grace working in our lives, but watch this, but we enlarge the shekel in imagining that those who are against us are more than those who are for us. Woo. 
that, that we, we, we got God's grace that God can work it out. God can bring us through it. But we act like our enemies are bigger than they really are. And we, yeah. like God, can work that thing out. And we start getting afraid and being fearful. Watch this. If I small, when we give our attention, watch this, to spirituality, that means um, that, that we give our, when, we, when our attention to our spirituality, we don't spend a lot of attention doing that but we are preoccupied with materialism, hmm. i.e. prosperity gospel. I'm not focused on my spirituality and being holy, but I want God to bless me and give me all the materials, give me the big house, give me the boo, give me the husband, give me the wife, you know, pay my bills. You know, you, you know, you don't know. I think sometimes we approach God like Destiny Child was doing back in the day, yeah. pay my bills, right? Mm -hmm. I think the way we approach God, right? Instead of working on our spirituality. A few more. Watch this. The, the ephi is small. Look at uh oh, expressing our faith. That means putting our trust in God versus the shekel of our request for tangible proofs that we can see God is working. Mm -hmm. Okay, we ex we make expressing our faith small, but we want to enlarge. We want an enlargement in, in the, or we enlarge our requests that have tangible proofs that we can see that God is working in our life. Look at that. Mm. Uh, okay, I want you to work supernaturally in my life, Lord, but I'm not going to express my faith. I'm not going to share the gospel with nobody, but God, I want you to show me some proof in my, that I'm real. But it says what? The righteous shall walk by faith and not by sight. Now here's yeah. the last. I'm, 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 this, look, look at this. We make ephah small in mercy that we offer to others, but we enlarge the shekel of mercies we expect from God. We show little mercy. We expect God to show us much mercy. Yes, mm -hmm. I was bothered with, with the people. Mm -hmm. Mercy towards the poor, and really that's a little bit of mercy, by the way, but they was expecting God to show them mercy when it came to their crops and famine coming in line, which God brought, by the way. They wanted God to show them mercy. They want to show mercy. They, 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 there's in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 8, as we get ready to um, close. This, that's the book in the Gospel of Matthew 18. Most saints, you've been in church a while, you know a lot about Matthew 18 because it talks about you know, if you've got an issue with your brother or sister, what do you do? If you can't work it out with them, you do what? Go to the pastor. You go bring somebody else with you. They go try to yeah. talk. If you win them over, praise the Lord. Now, if that don't work, it says bring them before the people of God. Bring them before the church. Now, in our church, the mm -hmm. Baptist Church of All Nations, we done kind of made it look too easy when it comes to Matthew 18 because what happens when, when you don't work it out between the two of you, if you bring one of the leaders or somebody with you to work it out that doesn't work, then we tell you, you got to come before the deacon board. <laughs> and y'all don't put that burden on the deacons to have to go deal with that stuff. The deacon, mm -hmm. hey, y'all consider that bringing them before the church. Okay. And so, but, but also this is the passage that talks about that. Um, if you harm a child, a little, I'm sorry. It says that you got to have faith like a child. You know, or as you would never see the kingdom of God. But guess what? What's interesting, it has faith in there. It has working out issues with your brother and sister. Then Jesus, like the preacher, he likes to give up a story or a parable to crystallize it. And he tells this story of an unmerciful servant. This servant who has so much debt that he owed, he could never pay it off. Okay, he could never pay it off. He went to the master, said, Master, I cannot pay this off. The master was like, if you don't pay it off, I'm going to put your key, I'm going to put you in jail, I'm going to put your kids in slavery, the family. He said, master, please, 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 please have mercy on me. And then after the master says, all right, I'm going to show you mercy and grace. As soon as one of the other servants got behind on some money they owed him, look what he did. Grabbed him by the neck and said, you better pay me back my money. <laughs> no mercy. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. In the mm -hmm. past, he grabbed him by the neck and said, you give no me money, or I'm going to put you in jail. The servants were so rattled, they were so worried by what he did that they told the master, 
Now, now this is in Reverend Hightower, 21st language. The master said, you ratchet, raggedy, trifling, good for nothing servant. I showed you all that mercy. How dare you do that? I'm gonna lock you up. I'm gonna see you where it's gonna be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The ephah of mercy, but shekel of mercy. You won't buy shekel of mercy, but you give an ephah mercy to your brother and sister in Christ. Wow. This, this whole passage is about essentially the book of Amos. This particular passage, eight we studied tonight, is about how much we give to the Lord versus what we expect from the Lord, or rather yet, we're taking from the Lord from the church. We, we, we're not, we don't want to be a consumeristic church where it's about people consuming things versus us being service of the Lord. We equip the saints for work of ministry. That's Ephesians chapter um, four, that's Bible, that we obtain to the full maturity and measure stature of Christ that we are no longer deceived or fooled or blown about by strange teaching. Did you know that the church is actually to equip you to prepare you for ministry, to serve? The church is actually not meant to equip you just to take. No, we help people who need help. We help the people on the margin of society, but we're not training our people and our leaders and everybody to be just takers because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Any questions on that? Any question? Well, so I want to encourage us tonight as we, we leave out of the book of um, Amos. This, this is one part. These first few minor prophet prophetic books, Hosea, Amos, and Joel can be heavy. They hard. But, and as I said last Sunday, you know, at, at, at Reverend Nikki's ordination, you know, the people were like, your, your word is hard, um, Amos. The people can't bear it. But God gives us a word to help us. He, while we can hear the word, that's an opportunity for us to turn to the Lord. That's a chance to, to get right, to do right. We don't, we should not want God to have to be like, I'm going to bring judgment on y'all. Mm. You know what's deep? The fact that God gave the word to them was an opportunity for them to repent. Because if you read Amos, there was a section where when they repented, he said, all right, I'm going to relent. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this book ends with God restoring the people. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 we ought to want to give our best to the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. We so ought to want to be a blessing to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Next week, guess what? You're gonna get the easiest assignment you can get for Bible study. We're gonna be mm -hmm. in the Obadiah. Do you know how many? Chapters are in the book of Obadiah. Can you guess? One. One five. chapter. Five. When you read the book of Obadiah, you can read the book of Obadiah. Oh, one less chapter. Than, one mm -hmm. chapter. You can read it in less than four minutes. But you might have to reread it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so next, and it's gonna, and we're gonna start to make a <laughs> little bit. We gotta go to Micah. We're gonna deal with Jonah, but you can start to see a shift. And some of these, Jonah, I'm, I'm sorry, Obadiah and Micah, not, no, Obadiah and Jonah is going to challenge us a little bit differently Jonah. than seeing in the other minor prophets. A lot of the other minor prophets were about the poor and, and how we treat the poor and um, and justice and, and, and mercy, so to speak. Well, we're going to start to see some other dimensions as we get into Obadiah and Jonah that I hope you're going to, going to be challenged in a different way. So, so those, you know, you, you can read Obadiah and Jonah in probably less than 10 minutes. Okay. And so um, please read Obadiah next week. You know, read it before Sunday and you might be ready um, for the sermon. Um, and so, so now what we do is we take all the prayer requests. What we're going to do is we're going to let Reverend Nikki close us in prayer. Um, is, is, is there any prayer requests that you have? I'm going to offer up one prayer request first. I want us to really keep in prayer. Um, leaders, I mean, at all levels of government, this the world, the national, state, um, yeah. city, local, keep them in, in, in prayer because they, there's something really strangely wrong and almost borderline mm -hmm. sinister and evil 
with mm. you know, some of the things that they um they do as it regards to poor. I mean, like yeah. really comes to the people of poor and some of the policy or just to have the blind spots to not even um mm. want to be accountable to what you do and and and, and basically kind of have don't even have courage, true moral courage to try to to help people on the margins of society. Um and, and this is not front lines, by the way. And that's what's really disturbing about it. front lines is Governor Como. That's what's on front lines now. They're not talking about the poor mm-hmm. on front line. That that should be the line. And, and, and unfortunately it's not. So praying for our leaders, for God to mm-hmm. and for them to turn, get come to know the Lord, get to know the Lord, repent, be born again, that they can have a heart like God when it comes to caring for the people, making true public servants. Any um, other prayer requests? I'd like to uh, request a prayer of comfort for um, the mothers who lost their sons, their children. I went to um, one, one funeral today where he was 47. And then, of course, Sister Faith Ram, she lost her son too. Yes. And I'll be attending that tomorrow. So that. Um, yeah, just the words of comfort for them because God knows they need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let's remember Mother Pearl. I understand that they're they're giving her speech therapy and physical therapy. So okay. yeah. Okay. You know the prayer request. I have a prayer request. I have a nephew that's been in prison for over 20 years for a murder he did not commit. Last year, the family called me looking for the baits, and they know it was their uncle who, who did the murder. So my my uh, brother-in-law and my, my cousin left today to go back up to way up in Maine and pray that the Lord would just release him now, mm. knowing that he did not murder this woman, and prayers to go up for Donnie Bates. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's so over 20 years now. There's some kind of judicial meeting uh thing that's happening that they're going to. Yeah, yeah. It's it's okay. been it's been a hard fight. It's been a hard fight. So okay. the people have came forward, they know who done it, but they was waiting for the his wife to die before they let everyone know. That he had murdered oh. this woman. So, mm. yeah. Praise the Lord. Mm. Okay. Mm. Any other prayer requests? Um, for this uh, COVID thing to not to start to go backwards again, mm-hmm. because now yeah. starting this week, we have to start wearing our masks at work again. Mm-hmm. So, everybody that comes in has to wear them. We have to wear them. We wear um up and walking around. If we're sitting at our desk, we don't have to, but just, uh, I don't want to wear it anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. So just to protect oh. those who, are, you know, who haven't got the, the vaccine that they would be protected, especially the children, because mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to be opening up soon. Mm-hmm. And, um, and for VBS, that's starting next week, just to um, be with all the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Any other prayer, prayer requests? How about for the kids in general to go along with COVID? Because our work did the same thing. All adults, mm-hmm. all children have to have masks to protect them. So understanding for the kids, because I can tell you this past week has been tough. Because kids are upset. They're like, why am I wearing it again? And it's hard to explain to children why. Mm. And, you know, comfort from for them. Mm. Mm-hmm. And some are scared again. Yeah. yeah. And okay. maybe comfort for the parents to be able to explain it. So there's no fear for the kids. Mm. Okay. We can only say so much as teachers. Yeah. Our own guidelines we're allowed to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Any other prayer requests? Well, I want to also lift up in prayer my um, mother-in-law and father-in-law. They flew to Puerto Rico to um, see um, he's um, next to youngest sister. Just keeping them in prayer, traveling down there, and they got to make it back home just that so they can be safe. Yes, Lord. Amen. So. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And, and I would ask you to pray for my mom's safe travels, but she already made it back home. So. Amen. <laughs> yes, we yeah, had a storm. It was, it was we had a storm. In yeah, we had a storm <laughs> in Atlanta last night. And no planes at all could land. And yeah. my power was out. I had already received a text while in flight that the power was out. So it, 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 it worked out, though. Everything's pretty much back to normal today, but that's what was going on. That's what took eight hours is that we had to go get fuel in a different state and and all, but it was it was good. You know, I came home and my daughter-in-law and son called me and made sure I was okay and it was good. I, overall, it wasn't it 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 didn't it wasn't as bad as it seemed, you know. It really yeah. wasn't. It's hard when you stick around, though. Yes, we got thunderstorm. We got blizzards up here. The South has um, tornadoes and thunderstorms that shuts down the air grid. That's how that's how powerful the thunderstorms are down in, in the South. We've experienced it. Yeah. Right. And my right. internet, my yeah. internet just came up about thirty minutes before Bible study. I've been yeah. I've been off all day, but. Everything's good though. I, I it it got fixed in time for me to fellowship with you all. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. I had to put my computer into into the geeks to fix it because I don't know if you all heard it last week. It was making noise. So um I'm using wow. my phone right now. So I'm hoping they can find out what happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. They will if you took it to the geek squad. Mm -hmm. they, um, they, they're gonna figure it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, let's close. Well, well, if there's no more prayer requests, let's close in prayer. Mm. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the time that we've had to share and fellowship and reading your word and studying it and hear more of your heart for the poor. Mm -hmm. Help us to pay attention to how we think about others and mm -hmm. for others and not just mm -hmm. want so much for ourselves, but want to extend more, give more than we receive. Sometimes, yeah. Lord, we, we, we want equal or better, mm -hmm. right? But you, you want us to, to give more than we receive. Mm -hmm. You want us to uh, have that heart of Christ to mm. be self-sacrificial. Help us to um, remember that in all kinds of ways. If it's love, it's, if it's material mm. goods mm. or even housework around the house or if it's um, you know, things at our jobs or mm. um, dealing with other family members, friends, yeah is help us to be givers mm. if it's listening mm. more than just talking mm. whatever it is mm -hmm. show mm. love help us to be able to yes, yes. Um, as mm -hmm. a um, especially when we could have times where we need to listen more and listen mm. to you more God mm. we know we need to receive more of you but help us to take that time to spend time in your word spend time in um, in prayer, mm. spend time mm -hmm. hearing your voice through the Holy Spirit who speaks to us through scripture, through mm. brothers and sisters, and, mm. and through just bringing to mem remembrance what you've already taught us. Lord God. Yeah. And not only hear, but obey and help us to mm -hmm. um, continue to mm -hmm. hear in that. Lord, we ask that you would continue to help our family members, their mothers who've lost their children. Mm -hmm. Help mm -hmm. Sister Faye as she mourns the son, mm -hmm. son and mm -hmm. all that family who's mm -hmm. mourning their father or husband. Mm -hmm. And 
um, and, the, and the child, mm-hmm. other family, other families who lost their children, Lord, be with mm-hmm. them, comfort them, strengthen them, mm-hmm. see yes. your, them in this time and know that you're with them. Mm-hmm. Lord, we yes. ask you to also bring um, our, my parents back home safely from Puerto Rico when they travel back. Um, thank you. Yeah. Miss some of the things that were happening right before they arrived. And thank God that mm-hmm. mom was able to arrive back in Georgia safely, Lord, even mm-hmm. if there was a delay. Thank you mm-hmm. for um, keeping them. And we ask that you would continue to help those in government national, state, and local, help them to see their blind spots, help them to, instead of not wanting accountability, helping them to know that they are here to serve the people, courage to deal with the poor, those who are being evicted from their homes, help them to find solutions that will help people and not just end up, you know, out on the streets or in shelters everywhere. Help them to have the food that they need, the clothing that they need, the shelter that they need. Victims, <laughs> know you, Lord, and have a heart for those mm-hmm. who need you, Lord God, who need um, help mm. and care yeah. for, for, for their lives and their, their well-being, Lord God. We ask that you would help uh, Mother Pearl, who's having that speech and physical therapy, help her to continue to do whatever exercises she has to do for those. She's really getting older, Lord God, and we know that yeah. I've been with her all these years, Lord God. Continue to strengthen her, not only um, through this therapy, but help her to be strengthened in you, Jesus, helping her yeah. to you to trust you in these last stages of life, Lord God. We are not prepared for them all the way, even though we might read about it, we experience it. It's a different thing, so help her to experience what your love and grace in this time and uh, for sister Bates nephew who's been in jail for the murder that apparently the husband committed help them to um release him in the stories that are coming up next may yes. they tell yeah. the truth instead of withholding it that justice may be done yes though it's delayed yes Lord more God, mm-hmm. so he get back to his family and get back yes. to being a productive citizen in society. Yes, Jesus. And help us all, Lord God, and especially the children as we have gone through this new phase of COVID. Thank God for yeah. us so long and protecting so many of us and keeping us from even getting it and, and nobody mm-hmm. our vicinity and dying from it uh, as far as within our church or anything. Thank you, Lord, for, for being there and keeping us, Lord God. But these children need your help who haven't been vaccinated and help parents and uh, to help them to understand more about mm-hmm. wearing masks and, and help them to put them on and, and help parents and everybody to remember that. Sometimes it's hard to remember when you, you have already been vaccinated and the children haven't been. Um, so help them to remember and to um, and to be safe in mm. the in the places mm. they go and the things that they do. Yes, Lord. And to respect the the rules, knowing that it's for their best mm. until the vaccine is yes. due for their age group. Um, we thank you so so much for providing this vaccine so rapidly um, compared to what it usually takes, um, and that they would. Be able to reap the benefits that we have and and that those who haven't been vaccinated who have the ability will go ahead and and see the 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 blessing of mm. having it and that the protection that you provide as well and not spread it to children or others elderly or whoever else and so um lord we also ask for the children who are going into vacation bible camp and all those who are leading and and preparing and teaching that they would um have a blessed time and they would magnify your holy and precious name lord. you are worthy of all glory all the honor and praise we lift you up lord and if there's those who we may have met oh god you know our need their need you know um their praise reports even so we yes, thank you 
we praise you and we ask that you would be with them and, and bless them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 It's so good to see all of you all this good night. Long. Um, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bless you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Deacon Briggs. Good night. Good night, Sister Ezreal. Good night, Sister Donna. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.